Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Do you know what? I put quite a few what I call lockdown films up where we've all been trapped with this virus and we've had unbelievable comments from it. It's people saying, you know, basically, get their mind off things. And I was, I've got to get my mind off things as well. I thought I'd go through some of my hard drives. Wow, I found a little trip I had for a few days away with the wife on a secret island in the Atlantic. A little short holiday, I don't know what it was, last holiday I had, five days, something like that. Anyway, it might just lift the mood. Those people out there struggling, it certainly lifted my mood because I've seen some fish. I want everything to get back to normal and go and see some of these fabulous sights, wonderful settings, and enjoy some of those restaurant meals. Will it ever come back like that again? I certainly hope so. Sit back, enjoy. It's only short, it's numb fishing, there's some fishy sort of stuff in there, but it might just pass 20 minutes for you. just come across a bit of luck on a tour guys do you know it's a Riviera or something or other I don't know where I am which side of the island I am there's the uh, ravine at the back and just down front of me if you can see here I just left the wife and having tea there's two guys snorkeling there's five guys in one fishing boat and I've just got them circling a net and I reckon that boat in the distance let me show you over there is a tuna or bonito boat he's probably going for tuna and he's coming here to get bait and they got two snorkelers down there. And I don't know if you're going to get any of this with the wind, but I really lucked out here to actually get them doing this. I don't know how long, we've only got like 20 minutes here on a tour bus, so how long these people take to actually get the net in, I don't know, but they're sure to be getting something like sardines for bait fish to put in the live bait tanks of the tuna boat over there. And I've seen a lot of poles in there, 
uh, big long bamboo poles which they put a hook and a bait on they spray a hose pipe of water on the surface and that brings the tuna up and then they catch them by a pole swing them straight in there's no rod there's well there's no rod there's no reel certainly no reel and you can see the guy in the middle of the net there he's telling them where to pull the net now they're just starting to pull the net up there there's another guy way up here just in there by the rocks and he's looking for bait fish as well probably another shoal so we're going to get an idea of what they're what they've got over here and you can see i've risked life and limb for you guys there's no other idiot that's climbing his way out over these monstrous great big sea defense blocks to get you a bit of exclusive totally awesome fish footage here of this net being pulled in whether we're going to see anything come up i don't know or whether the tour bus leader is going to scream for mr pullen to get back on the bus I don't know. There is indeed another tuna boat way in the distance. You probably won't see it with this uh, with this with this camera. I'm going to put this off just now, a second until such time as uh, we see where they got the net. So presumably to get the live bait they've got to come close in shore. Oh yeah, I've just seen something else, Bob. <laughs> oh yeah. Way, way in the distance. I believe beyond that breakwater are floating tuna holding pens. Where they catch the tuna, keep them alive and feed them, fatten them up. Now whether they're blue fins or not, I have no way of knowing. I don't think they keep the smaller tuna in those pens. So maybe they're after the giant blue fin tunas. The guys are working here now, pulling the net up, they're on the black piece of net and they've got to get down to what I would call the cod end. And there is the snorkeler coming in in his wetsuit, must be cold water, he's in a full wetsuit down there. And they put an anchor down, <clears throat> got a buoy there for the end of the net and fingers crossed within five minutes be able to see if there's any, any small fish coming in for their bait. So here we got like traditional fishermen and look at the scenery in the backdrop here, beautiful scenery the guys are now uh, getting close to hauling the net in there. I think they're pulling up towards the anchor and getting it shortened up to the what we call the cod end. I'm calling it a cod end, I don't know with this net. It must be like a seine net. Yeah, he's just got one little tiny one inch fish here. I saw him uh, lift it out. It doesn't look good guys. I saw one one inch fish. That just goes to show you. Fishermen the world over here and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and two snorkelers in the water. That's nine people and they got no fish. Well, one place they do have some fish is in this chilled section. It's like prawns, shellfish, various pieces of look like bream and snapper. Probably got clams in there as well. Some different types of fish here and this is how they catch them. And of course, they dry fish as well over there. They don't just have fresh fish. I found on the side of the pier, it was like, Honestly, a cricket bat you could use at Lord's. So hard, unbelievable. Just, I guess, I'm going to call it sun-dried, but because over there they get wind all the time, so they get the benefit of wind and sun-dried. And then, yes, real fishing in the restaurant. Well, it's very rare for me to eat fish with fruit. I can assure you this is absolutely exquisite. Okay. Who would have thought banana and fish would go together? in fabulous, fun-filled, hopefully fish-filled Madeira. That's a Portuguese island. I'm in the city of Funchal and down here they have a market. Hopefully I'm going to get to show you some fish but this is one of the top places in the world to get scabbard fish which is called, another word, espada and they cook it with, wait for this, that's right, banana. I don't think you've got any bananas in that cabin Mike but just look at the setting I'm in here you can see I'm in the absolute middle. I'm actually on the roof of the hotel. Believe it or not, I'm on the roof of the hotel. If I just spin around slowly, you'll see what a fabulous setting this is. A full-on city setting. Do you know, I'm not even sure I'm supposed to be up here on the roof. <laughs> Nobody stopped me. I haven't fallen over yet. Anyway, let's get down the market and see if we can't show you the scabbard fish or the espada. Well, no trouble at all located 
the black scabbard fish if you can see look at the fangs on that and of course it tells you that it is a deep water night predator it's got that sort of milky reflectiveness about the sort of i'm going to call it the pupil of the eye would it be but you can see that milkiness in there and that's got sort of some back reflective system in the back of their eyeball it allows them to feed at night now generally they don't catch these fish during the daytime most of them at night they're sort of i guess they must feed near the bottom i don't know during the uh, in the big depths during the daytime and during the night they come up now, they are the weirdest creature but i can assure you they taste absolutely well they just absolutely melt in your mouth now here again i'm guessing is like the dried fish that i saw back on that harbour wall and loads and loads of it though what species of fish that is i do not know it looks i don't know it, it just, i want to say something like a cod opened up and dried or a pollock or something like that and of course you get all the variety i saw a rainbow trout go flying past here a salmon with salmon cutlets as well it's quite unusual and of course you couldn't go to an atlantic island without seeing the tuna there which i'm guessing that little chappy on the right hand side of the frame is a big eye tuna just there i'm guessing i'm calling that a big eye might actually be a long fin or albacore that one and that's what you saw by the length of the pectoral skin a fin skin You're talking of a skin here's a man skinning and gutting look at this guy away he goes sorting it all out and everything comes in fresh from the market there and he's then sorted out i've no idea what this is i think it might be washed scabbard fish i think because i went into the market and i could see this guy sort of scraping it i don't know whether they try and get that black skin off it you know using a ridged knife at the back that you have for sort of descaling but i can see the head of the scabbard fish there and he's peeling it back so i guess not good and look at some of these fish bass just like parrot fish there and i saw some wrasse coming in the pipe there's some ballam wrasse look in the picture there everything gets eaten these are what are they be gilt head bream would they be those guys i think they'd be gilt head bream big chunk of tuna no idea what that one a big cleaver there so i'm guessing that might be a small blue fin or a large big eye i'm calling these like squirrel a squirrel fish with those big eyes again a big deep water feeder and various other species like sardines and everything there now if you watch this guy he was doing that scraping and he's rubbing looks like rubbing the skin off with his bath his, his bath towel i think i don't know and the heads as these scabbard fish all those fangs and teeth they're obviously used for something. Now, people boil them up and make soup because there was light like, stacks and stacks of heads there. Amazing species with those uh, with those teeth. And then I got to go, yes, fishing myself. Happy days. Out I went on this bit of, well, blue water or what. Look at the colour of it. You can see the sea defences I'm on there. And just spinning away, I was happy. Ahora no voy a sufrir, yo merezco mucho más, ya no lloro, me levanto Pero pa'lante porque lo de atrás sí me dolió No me da pena escribir que fuiste un error También fuiste mi mejor lección, de hecho Hasta me hiciste un favor Los ojos son malos para guardar secretos Como me pide que te tenga respeto Me ha fallado pa' no fallarte a ti Y ahora me pide que lo hablemos discreto Ya que lo pienso no fue error conocerte Error fue pensar que era then i came on the south coast to a place that was famous as a painting spot by sir winston churchill that's correct they don't come any more english than that as you can see the sign there says exactly the spot he was there standing where the great man was and where he painted several paintings i believe in there he used to like going there and can you blame him look at it look at it we shall fight them on the beaches well this was one little cove or beach well worth fighting over lovely spot there beautiful So listen, talking about buildings and type of bushcraft buildings, how about this one? There's a Portuguese building with a very, very high apex to it. And it's thatched roof, which in the summer keeps it cool. But in the winter, 
keeps it warm. And it was used years and years ago, I guess centuries ago they built these. And it was down here in a region it's called Santana. But you can see basically from this that it's a straight thatch with a huge peak to it. And wait for this, they only use it for sleeping in because of the temperature change. They could probably store stuff in the top because there's an apex above the ceiling there, a little hatch door that you can uh, load stuff into. And inside they didn't have a bathroom, they just had a wash basin there. So there's no real bathroom, there's no real kitchen. They would keep that as a separate building and basically just use this one here as a sleeping accommodation really. But nowadays obviously they're not used. This is a traditional building built on rush and I guess it's willow on the uh, supports there and then timber inside. But it's quite something different. And listen, what interests me is the height of that roof. Is it to keep the heat in or is it to dissipate you know, heat or cold? Which way? Because it's a steep apex to it. But obviously, if it worked years ago, it will work now. Even down in the corner here, I'll just show you quickly that they had a wicker basket. And in that wicker basket would be a great big glass jar, which they filled with water and used the straw, I'm guessing, to keep that temperature constant. And as I over here, there's the old wash basin stand here's the wash basin it shouldn't really actually have that on there normally have a jug of basin on there and down here just show you quite interesting this is an iron that they used I guess to put the coals inside so that was the iron and an old lamp just see so you can see the old lamp and this is actually a second bedroom you're not going to see much in here it is so cool the temperature in here unbelievable so there you go something different sort of early improved bushcraft I'm going to call it Well, one of the places we went to had these weird, they look like sheep hanging up there. I believe they're supposed to be clouds, but they do look awfully like balls of, bales of sheep fur. I don't know what it was made from, but it's supposed to be obviously a plane flying through the clouds. But just look at the weather, look at the fantastic colours that they paint on the boats over there. And I'm fascinated by them because they're a traditional old fishing boat. And I'm guessing they're all made from wood and years old. Yes, they've you know, got outboards and stuff on them. But they go out and they must be very, very good sea boats there. Now one of the places it got me to stand was at the, towards the end of the tour. This was, I don't know, if they said it was 10,000 feet high on a, on a glass plate, I, I, you know, would you believe it? I don't know how high it was, I forget, but it was frighteningly high and I don't like it. Maybe I suffer from vertigo. They say, if you don't want to throw yourself over the edge, it's not normal. It's not a normal feeling to want to go, what if, shall I jump? No, 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 I don't, I don't get that feeling at all. Look at the size of the boat's wake down there on the blue water and you'll get an idea how unbelievably high we are up on this, uh, this sea cliff, or like looking down a ravine. So hugely impressive, a nice view. At the end of the day, I only put the camera out on my pole, but what did worry me was standing on this unbelievably broken glass and indeed, Oh dear, just in the corner with some broken glass. I think it's time to leave. Well, I hope that was a little distraction for you. I'm going to hunt through my hard drives and see if there's any other footage I can find for you. As always, fishing films go up a Friday at 7pm. Occasionally I'll bung another one up during the week. If not, I'm going to keep putting these little interesting ones up because we get a lot of comments on them. People find them, I don't know, a bit relaxing. I'll tell you what, I wish I could get back there. 
warm summer evenings, glass of cold wine, lovely fish meal. Come on, let's get rid of this virus and get back to normal. See you next time, guys. So